We'll be making some uh, forward-looking statements, so please pay attention or ask you to read our, our disclaimer. So what's happening with lending gold? Well, we've, uh, we're well into construction now. We're well on our way to essentially a year from now be producing first gold here in Ecuador. This is the first uh, large-scale Western mining operation being built in the country. So obviously it has its challenges, but it also has its, has its rewards as we're learning, learning much more about the Ecuadorian people and the Ecuadorian economy. We, uh, it's a long year mine life, 15 years, but I'll talk a little bit about the exploration potential. Very happy we're on schedule and on budget, and you can see that uh, well, just about two-thirds of our, of our capital has been committed, and we're nearly 30%. Uh, those stats there are as of the end of August, so as of the end of uh, September, we're over 30% uh, complete on construction now. The critical path is our underground development. We have two twin declines going down now, and we're just over, well, again, this is as of end of August, and so we're now over three kilometers down. This was long-term time considered to be the, the, one of the riskiest parts of this, but we've had some great success here. And we also are sitting on a 16-kilometer trend, and we talked about minimum 15-year mine life. We see a lot of exploration potential. We had pulled back on exploration, but we're going to be starting another program in, in next year. Just recently, we completed what we called our updated project estimate. This was something the board asked us to do, and we did a full bottoms-up uh, capital cost re-estimate. And uh, we were quite happy with the results. Obviously, it would have been better if it was down, but you can see that our capex went up four million on a base of 730 million. And so that's uh, essentially we're flat. We did do a new mine plan, which resulted in about 4,000 less ounces in the pre-production period. And we felt we were a bit aggressive on our operating costs uh, during that ramp up period. So we actually increased our cost during the ramp up. So there was a net increase there of another four so overall increase of uh, $8 million. We're fully financed. You heard the panel talk about ways of doing that. Well, ch markets have been challenging over the last little while. So we did a combination of private equity with uh, Orion and Blackstone, which we completed in May, and did an equity financing with three parties, Orion, Newcrest, and the Lundin family. And that was done at a, a family and, and Newcrest at 550 a share and uh, Ryan at five and a quarter. And then we just most recently, or a few months ago, announced a consortium of seven banks to raise an additional 350 million in debt. Just a few quick things on what we call the UP. Our team loves acronyms. We can reconfirm the construction schedule. We increase, reduce the payback period, increase the IRR and NPV. And I'll talk a little bit later, but one of the big things was we reduced our all-in sustaining costs from just over $600 an ounce to $583 an ounce. The ore body itself is quite compact, you can see. I want to, you to take three things away from this slide. The ore body is quite compact, so we, the mine plan is relatively simple. Essentially, we'll do all of our development right off the start. Our current reserves are only 67% of our indicated resources. So there's a lot of potential to grow our mine life once we even get underground. And you'll see in a couple slides, we need to get to that south end. And that's where we see a lot of exploration potential to drill further to the south, where a lot of our inferred resources are. You can see the topography there. That was an area that was difficult to drill by Kinross and Aurelian. And so it's an area we, once we get underground, we're very excited about getting out to. This is our new gold production profile with the new mine plan. You can see the miners were able to get us to some higher grade earlier on. So within 2021 and 2022, we're just over 400,000 ounces. And this is not a big mine. It's only 3,500 ton a day. So this is the benefit of grade. And then the following 10 years will be between 325 and 375,000 ounces per year. This is an illustration of the mine plan itself. The red is where we were as of the end of August. The blue is the remaining contractor development. This is a contractor that's 50% Ecuadorian, 50% uh, Chilean. And the green then is owner development. You can see on this graphic that ventilation shaft that we need to get to on, on, uh, on the right there. That is the area that we really need to get to in order we can get to the 3,500 ton a day. But also then that's going to enable us to set up those drill stations and drill out there to the south. We 
had anticipated going through a major fault in August. Good ground we, at, we are estimate to be between 5.2 and 5.3 meters per day per phase. You can see that we only planned about 4.7 in August. A couple things, that fault was originally anticipated to be wet, and we're also going underneath the main, the river between uh, the declines and the ore body. Happy to announce it was totally dry. We're getting more water from our jumbos than we saw from the fault or underneath the river. And you can see that our decline rates actually, our advance rates are about 50% higher than we'd anticipated. The miners are doing a great job. We're very happy with the productivity we're seeing and the advance rates. That's about 50%. These are five and a half by five meter stokes, so two rounds a day, which is, which is very good. The site itself is quite compact. You see the portals, the declines there on the right, the mill to the center. It's a circuit will produce about 70% of our gold as concentrate, 30% as adore. It's called GFL. Waste pile there to the left, and then uh, further to the left off screen is our tailing. So quite a very, a very compact site. Regarding the construction, obviously the key is the plant. All the equipment's been bought. Actually, the mills are about a month away from landing in Ecuador. They're on the ocean right now. We're 30% complete con concrete as of the end of uh, August. This is uh, be updated. Grinding steel's going up. Everything at the mill site's going along very well. In terms of off-site infrastructure, the two main things are a new access road, which cuts our travel time by about an hour from the main highway to the site. Also, it's a much wider road. This uh, is essentially going to be complete next month. We'd hoped it would be done this month. We're just down to doing some graveling and finishing up. And the other is a 42-kilometer power line. We are under construction now, both on-site and off-site. Uh, all the land easements have been acquired for that, so it, which is one of the big things in South America. That's done, so now it's construction. We anticipate having that done in March. One of the things that uh, we talked about for quite a while was environmental licenses. We have now all of our licenses. For the longest time, if you heard me speak before about the quarry, was one of the ones we needed. We now have them all. We got that last month, and that's what we need that for tailings dam construction. So we're, we have a few operating permits left with fire department, things like that, but this now project is fully licensed. You can see we've got a lot on the go. I've already mentioned gold in first quarter, commercial production in May, and you can see from this the underground development is a critical path. But that is moving along very well, and we uh, and then now we're looking, focusing on the power line and tailings construction. I mentioned the op cost is down. This is part of our UP. A couple things, we looked at new mining methods. We were able to eliminate one type of backfill. We're now just cemented rock and paste. And also our process cost came down with re, um, uh, reduction in reagents. And the other part is now we have one contract in place in terms with two other uh, smelters uh, in place, which brought our smelting and refining down, bringing our all-in sustaining down from 609 to 583, the lower quartile. Why should you own the stock? Well, you can see here that as we get closer to production, there'll be a re-rate. You see that the, the columns on the right are producers. Uh, there's a couple producers on the left which are having some issues, which are mentioned by the panel. But that's why you want to own London Gold as we move closer to production and continue to de-risk this project. Shareholder base is solid. Uh, Newcrest at 27, the family at 22, Ryan at 11. And I'm just uh, running a little bit out of time here, so just a summary slide. Again, we're on track. Capital is well committed and first goal in about a year from now. And that's it, thank you.